Hi, my name is Jeremy. Today I'm going to be reading to you from The Haunted Mesa by Louis Lemoyne. Chapter 1. It was night, and he was alone upon the desert. It had been over an hour since he had seen another car, a Navajo family in a pickup. He shivered. What was the matter with him? Ever since leaving the highway, he had felt a growing uneasiness. Had he not traveled hundreds of lonely roads before this? Or was it that old memory haunting him still? Yet why should that be so? It was only a story told by an old man at a lunch counter, and he had heard many such stories and spent a good part of his life proving them to be illusions, fabrications, and misunderstood phenomena. Why had that one story clung to his memory? Was it the old man himself? He drove slowly, watching for the turnoff he had been warned would be hard to find. The road was a mere trail among low sand hills, with the dark outlines of square-edged mesas looming against the sky. Of course, Eric Hopart's letter was part of it. That letter had come from a badly frightened man, and no man he had ever known was more cool, concise, and self-sufficient than Eric Hokart. There was no sound but that of the car itself, nothing to see but that narrow avenue of light carved by the headlights through a tunnel of darkness. He leaned forward, peering into the night, trying to see the turnoff of time. On impulse, he pulled over and stopped, shutting off the motor and the lights. He sat very still in the darkness, listening. Listening for what? With the lights out, the desert was gray, tufted with black spots of desert growth. Here and there loomed tall columns, and one rocky mass shaped like a pipe organ. It was absolutely still. How rarely, he thought, can modern man experience a total silence. Yet the desert had it to offer, as well as the high mountains. Upon the car door, he stepped out into the chill night air, but he did not close the door behind him. The sound would have seemed like an obscenity in this all-pervading stillness. A step away from the car, he stood listening. What he hoped to hear was the approaching sound of Eric's four-wheel drive vehicle. No doubt he was still too far away, somewhere in the canyon ahead. Eric had suggested. To the westward lay a long mesa, stark and black against the sky. That would be the one Eric had mentioned in his letter. It was also the one he himself remembered. Almost 10 miles long and some 2,000 feet high, the last 300 to 500 feet sheer rock. Had he ever mentioned to Eric his knowledge of that mesa? As he turned back to the car, Something flared at the corner of his eye. Turning quickly, startled, he stared at the flare of the mesa's dark rim. For a space of what must have been 30 seconds, it flared, changing color slightly, then vanished. He stared at the end of the mesa where the light had appeared. A campfire was unlikely at that height and in that location. A crash plane, he had heard no sound of motors no explosion, see nothing except the odd flare. Puzzled and more than a little disturbed, he got back into his car, and a half mile farther, he found the turnoff for which he was watching. He turned down a sandy slope and drove along the bottom of a dry wash. From here on, he had been advised, it would be rough going, even for a four-wheel drive. But he had a shovel in the back of his car and some still mesh he could unroll ahead if necessary. Many desert roads follow washes, but he never liked them. This was not the season for flash floods and the skies were clear, but flash floods had a way of happening when least expected. Long ago, when only a teenager, he had watched a man lose all he had in just such a flood. That will be it for today. Thank you very much for listening.